away for Hollywood. That's gooey, bally, hooly, Hollywood. Where any office boy or young mechanic can be a panic with just a good looking pen. We have a cast of colourful characters who work in front of and behind the camera to make a movie. A movie that has the power to transport us into the future or show us life as it might once have been. Hollywood knows how to emotionally connect with an audience. This is what speakers have to do. And a gentleman in the fourth row puts his hand up and said, you're quoting my competitor, why aren't you quoting me? <laughs> to which, of course, I said, well, who the heck are you? <laughs> and that's when I met and started becoming friendly with Michael Haig, who calls the opening of a movie the seduction scene. I didn't know, actually, until the end, who the hero of that story was. But what I know is it isn't you. You said frequently, you get off the plane and the heat hits you. No, you don't get off the plane. The hero of your story is going to get off the plane. Having heard the end, I see that you're the hero of that story. What I would recommend at the beginning is, forget how we can imagine getting on a troop <coughs> transport. First of all, I can't. Never was in the military. But you want to start with the setting. And the setting is Honduras. You said a number of really vivid things about it. Front load that. That's what I want to hear first. Now, you could do it one of two ways. You could say, our, the, our, uh, not our, the plane landed in the middle of Honduras. I stepped off and was hit by all that. Or you can start with, imagine a town in the middle of a volcano, or whatever way you said that. Imagine that town in the middle of one of the, of the second poorest country in Central America. That's Honduras. I was on a troop transport coming there because I had been asked to do whatever. So when you're on there, that's your everyday life because you were already doing that even though you're starting with the arrival. I step off and was hit immediately by the heat. And then you go from there, and you keep yourself as the hero of the story. Now, what we also need to know in that story is, what is your objective? You need some goal. I, never, I still am not quite sure, maybe you said, but why you were there. It was, it, was it if it was fact-finding, or were you actually there to give charity to these groups? Or, stories. Oh, okay. I, I didn't. I missed that. If, if you had said it, Sorry. stories. News stories. My, my bad. Oh yeah. That okay. No, I, I heard that, but it was okay. lost. Yeah. Okay. So you were you were there to do news stories, but it needs mm -hmm. to be more specific than that. Mm -hmm. I was given the job of doing a story of how we might help these people. What I'd mm -hmm. like the story to get to, because I think it would be the transformation the character goes through, is for the hero of that story to be someone who was there because they thought they could help these people. And what that character came away with was being helped much more than you helped anybody else by learning the real meaning of generosity from this kid. That, to me, is the irony of it, that, the, that who you thought you were there, but if you were telling stories, you can't do the help there. But it could still be, I was supposed to paint a portrait of, of Poverty. I was supposed to paint a portrait of this. I was supposed to call it the local flavor. I didn't know I was going to end up actually learning this great lesson. But the, the, the focus needs to be you, who you were at the beginning, how, what your goal was when you got off that plane, the steps you took to accomplish that. It, it, you kind of meandered. It was, I, I didn't know, first you were looking, and then you went and described the town, and then you went to a restaurant, and I didn't know why that was. You need to stay focused as a story on, I was there to do X, I did this, I did this, I did this. And then the night before we left, I felt like I'd gotten good information. The night before we left, we were asked to a restaurant. And the, I like the big steak, it's obscene, no one, no one could eat that. 
But stay with yourself as the hero. Don't, don't lapse into you or make generalized statements. This is what you saw. This is what you did. This is what you were supposed to do. And then you saw the kid. And then you gave this child and, and you said, or you and the group you were with said, the end of the story was great. The end of the story was very powerful. To get there, we need to know that you're the hero and hear the story up to that point. That's so what he learned was much more, empower, much more powerful and life-changing than the stories he was there to actually get. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. What can we all learn? Let's get to the action faster. We all have a tendency to spend too much time setting up our stories. That's one message that I'm certainly going to walk away from just a tiny nitpicky way that you can improve what you say and that you would see if you had it transcribed. And maybe at this point it's going to get out of the speech. But you said, it's pretty easy to imagine. It's not so easy to imagine. I would say it's tougher to imagine. Just make it sound more specific. At this point, what have you learned from Michael and from watching a two of our very brave members that will help you in your next speaking assignment? Any observations or lessons? Yes, Nick. I just learned how important and impactful organizational of the story is. Uh, just little things that we could call common power. Yeah. <coughs> it's just so important to organize it correctly. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Over here. Uh, two things. You can self-edit and greatly strengthen your program and getting coaching from professional coaches or even friends who are full professionals very helpful because you can't notice and see when you're involved with it. Very difficult to be creative in isolation. <coughs> Less is more. Less is more. Good. Okay. I'm sorry, could you say more? Sometimes <coughs> less means more. Yeah, good. Couple of last questions for Michael. Now that you've seen his work, his magic. Yes, Amy. Amy is one of our resident speech coaches. Ah, good. From, your la from that last coaching session you just did, I was surprised. I thought the hero was the little boy because he taught the lesson. So how do we identify? You're saying that, he, that the speaker is the hero. Well, I said that because that's who the story ended up being about. Uh, you, you cued us to your story saying this is going to be about a little boy, but I, uh, my belief was that you wouldn't say that to an audience. You were just telling us where you were headed. And if you were, I would strongly suggest you not begin that way. So because... It's an element of doesn't mean that they do something Oh, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Here's the thing. Hero is just the jargon I use. It's my word for the protagonist or the main character. But in terms of the traditional meaning of the word, by my definition, a hero is not someone who does heroic things. A hero is someone who has the potential to become heroic. The story will be, if there's transformation, about how they actually become the hero. He became the, the traditional hero when he was able to take that back with the, the message and share it with his audience. And in our world, we would say we're putting the principle that the young boy taught us on the pedestal. Just as the principles that made Marilyn successful are on the pedestal. We were a quick question because we can get the hook and you have a yeah. concluding I, yeah, story. Well, well, yeah. True, but I, I want to add one thing. The yeah. other reason I picked him as the hero is because he's the person who changed. 
the child did not mm. change. The child mm. is what I would call an evolved character. Mm. And we, it's much easier for us to empathize and stay in tune with the person who's going to make the transformation than the instrument of that transformation. And it is more of a message that someone who is well fed and has a job learns the principle from someone who appears to have nothing. And when they have something, they give it away. Exactly, exactly. Okay, I interrupted you, sorry, no. Patricia. Yeah. Uh, uh, two quick, no, quick, 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 quick. What, what's his change? That he became more generous? John, how do you refer to Well, what's the change? In, in well, what I heard John. was he had a value shift. The value shift was this. I thought I knew what generosity was. And I didn't know until I had this experience. And that's the meaning of generosity I need to give to you because I, came, I would have come into this and given you something that wasn't as strong. 